Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Capitol Hill lawmakers now have just nine days to avert a government shutdown. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on the Republican broker's short-term funding deal that's now facing fire from both sides of the aisle. That story ahead. Outside with live cam this morning, pretty humid out there, 77 degrees. I was a gas sta- at a gas station in the heat of the day yesterday, and everybody's kind of looking at each other while they're pumping their gas going, what happened yeah. around here? Because it was, it was like a continuation of June, July, and August, and here we are still in September. It yeah. is Thursday, September 21st. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. Uh, yeah, when I stepped out this morning, I guess maybe the AC inside was a little uh, much because I stepped outside. It just felt like my whole face was melting already. I understand. And that's if the AC is still working, Mike Osterhage. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, it, it, I said that the heat is almost like the person that wins and then sort of rubs it in your face. It's oh, been yes. All yes. summer long and it's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to keep you. Yeah, know, they do keep bounds. pouring salt in that wound. Yeah, we were uh, close to a record high temperature yesterday within a couple of degrees. Got up to 98. Same thing again today. Got a few clouds that have moved in here a little uh, sooner than the past few days. That's just going to hold what heat and humidity we have in here right now. So 77 degrees we may drop another degree or two. 79 Port S.A., Castroville, uh, Canyon Lake, and these numbers just think couple of days back, we had dew points down in the low 60s and even 50s in the hill country. No, we're back up to 73, 74, 75. Yes, that is kind of fog up your glasses sort of humidity when you uh, step outside and kind of kind of wants to push back a little bit when you go out there. Molds on the high side. Got fall elm, ragweed, pigweed, everything else is low. And it is a green CPS Energy Conservation Day. Scan the QR code for more ways to uh, conserve. And this morning, temperatures again, maybe fluctuated degree or two, 76. We will have uh, some of these clouds hanging around here. And then 98, once again, record is 100. Very close call, mostly sunny skies. So we do have those rain chances coming in here by late in the weekend, first part of next week. I mean, don't get your hopes really high for it, but at least there will be a few of them out there. A couple of extra clouds at least shave some uh, few degrees off these temperatures. But boy, it's going to be a hot finish to summer and a hot start to fall. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. As border cities report a huge new surge of migrants, even declaring an emergency, the Biden administration is clearing the way for Venezuelan migrants to get work permits. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott is responding to the situation, and he's not being shy about his criticism of the president's border policies. Earlier yesterday, Abbott posted on Twitter, Texas installed razor wire and Eagle Pass to stop illegal crossings. Today, the Biden administration cut that wire opening the floodgates to illegal immigrants. I immediately deployed more Texas National Guard to repel illegal crossings and install more razor wire. Now, just a couple hours later, he added, I officially declared an invasion at our border because of Biden's policies. We deployed the Texas National Guard, DPS, and local law enforcement. We are building a border wall, razor wire, and marine barriers. We are also repelling migrants. Meanwhile, Eagle Pass has declared an emergency with 2,500 migrants arriving yesterday alone. Many are showing up at the Migrant Resource Center here in San Antonio, and workers there are seeing about 750 people per day. But the center can only hold up to 700. In response to this, uh, the Biden administration says it will now send 800 Defense Department personnel to the border, in addition to 2,500 National Guard members already deployed to help Customs and Border Protection. Here at home, more people are getting COVID in San Antonio. Metro Health says 2,629 new cases were reported within the past week, and that's a fourth straight week that we've had more than 2,000 new COVID cases in San Antonio. Now, five people also died from COVID over the past week. That's the largest increase in COVID-related deaths since January. More than 350 local students will benefit from new career training grants. Lytle ISD, Judson ISD, and Palo Alto College are among the 46, rather 42 districts and colleges to receive a Jobs and Education for Texans grant. The $44,000 sent to Lytle will help cover culinary training, while Judson ISD will receive $255,000 to help train future industrial engineers. Another 254,000 will go to Palo Alto to train some of its students in information technology. 
The $11 million distributed through the Jobs and Education for Texans grants will cover equipment costs for job training programs. Taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol this morning in Washington, D.C. This morning, lawmakers there have just nine days to avert a federal government shutdown. Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he has a short-term funding solution. But it's not clear if it has enough support to advance in the House and the Democratic-led Senate. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. After an hours-long meeting with House Republican conference members, Speaker Kevin McCarthy leaving optimistic about a short-term government funding deal they worked out. So we had a great discussion. Um, I think we've got a plan to move forward. Sources tell ABC News the proposal includes deeper spending cuts and stricter border policies, but faces an uphill battle in the Senate. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accusing Republicans of not keeping their word on spending levels agreed to with Democrats, taking swipes at the stopgap proposal. So it's very hard when you don't have shared values. Some hardline Republicans are voicing opposition too, saying McCarthy is breaking deals he made with them to become Speaker. All we've gotten are lies and broken promises and failure and shutdowns. Without a funding plan, estimates project that 4 million workers won't be paid, including the military and federal law enforcement. Speaker McCarthy says he intends to hold House members in Washington until at least Saturday as that September 30th funding deadline looms. President Zelensky is leading a country that is right at the forefront in the fight for democracy, in the fight for what is right, and we need to support him. New funding for Ukraine's fight against Russia, also a sticking point in the Capitol Hill spending debate, with many Republicans now opposed. Ukraine's President Zelensky set to meet with House and Senate members today. I want to make sure there's accountability where the resources are going. I want to see a plan of what we're looking for for victory. President Zelensky also meeting with President Biden at the White House today. A U.S. official tells ABC News that Biden is expected to announce a new military aid package that includes resources to bolster Ukraine's air defenses. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The White House is reportedly set to provide a new aid package to Ukraine when President Volodymyr Zelensky visits today. The package will include additional artillery, anti-armor, anti-aircraft, and air defense capabilities to help Ukraine as the Russian army continues its attack. National Safety Council spokesman John Kirby said the aid will have a significant impact on Ukraine's fight and push back on Republican lawmakers who continue to question the aid. Kirby said it is critical that Congress grant the $24 billion supplemental funding request. He says that's because the cost will be much higher if Russia takes Ukraine. A North Carolina family is suing Google, claiming their family member died after the company's navigation system led the man off a collapsed bridge. According to the lawsuit, Philip Paxson was following GPS directions last September when he drove off an unmarked, unbarricaded bridge. He crashed about 20 feet below and drowned. An attorney representing Paxson's family says the bridge collapsed years earlier in 2013. The lawsuit accuses Google of failing to correct its mapping algorithms. In a statement, Google said, quote, we have the deepest sympathies for the family. Our goal is to provide accurate routing information and maps, and we are reviewing this lawsuit, end quote. 438, 77 degrees. Picking the right car seat that will help protect your baby. Up next, the names of the seats that perform the best in crash tests. And let me pull up my notes here from our Stephen Cavazos because we had a bus fire earlier. A Transkai camera, 35 at Space Center. There it is, is the view from an early morning bus fire reported along 410 southbound near FM 78. The exit to 410 southbound is closed. And we'll have video of that fire coming up in our five o'clock half hour. And looking out there with live cam, yes, we're in the 70s, but a little more humid this morning when you step outside. Be prepared for that and yeah, prepare for the heat once again this afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike to see what you can expect for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. It's one of the most important things a new parent will buy, the car seat. But there are so many choices and it's hard to know which ones will protect infants the best. 12 on your side's Merlin Ward shows us some that did well in Consumer Reports' tough test. Car seats, they carry precious cargo. The main objective of a car seat is to, 
to manage the crash forces, you know, the, the energy absorption and all ways to control the forces and energy, keeping it away from the child. All child car seats sold in the U.S. must meet federal safety requirements, but Consumer Reports goes beyond that and does its own crash tests at higher speeds. And on a test sled designed to more closely represent the inside of a car and a real world crash. There are so many new features coming out on car seats that truly take incredible engineering. And it's awesome to be able to get our hands on so many different kinds of seats and see how they're going to perform in a crash test. That includes testing seats with load legs and extra support that extends from a car seat's base to the vehicle's floor and makes the seat safer. This Kleck Ling is CR's top recommended infant seat, earning high scores for crash protection. Engineers also evaluate how easy each seat is to install. Car seats are unique in that there's so much of the consumer's use that actually affects the outcome of how it controls energy and protects a child in a crash. The Kiko KeyFit rated as one of the easiest seats to install and also top for safety. Make sure that your child is buckled properly and the seat is properly installed every single time. To help you choose, Consumer Reports has a free infant car seat finder. We have a link on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 443, 77 degrees. Several popular authors are now suing the company responsible for the AI-powered website ChatGPT. Up next, why they say the program is using their works without permission. In this morning's GMA First Look, the best-selling authors taking on OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT. More than a dozen authors now suing OpenAI, claiming it used their books to train its ChatGPT bot without their permission and without compensation. OpenAI responding to the lawsuit saying in a statement, we respect the rights of writers and authors and are working to understand their concerns. This morning, two of those writers, Michael Connolly and David Baldacci, are telling GMA why they've taken this legal step. They shouldn't have taken them and fed it into this machine without even contacting me. I feel so violated. It looks like someone had just taken my entire library um, without my knowing it. So what plot twist will come next? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. You may or may not know this, but one of the largest populations of mammals in the world is right here in our own backyard. The Bracken Cave Preserve north of San Antonio is home to an estimated 20 million Mexican free-tailed bats. RJ Marquez and photojournalist Gavin Nesbitt take us to the cave and inside what's known as the Batnado. One by one, they emerge at sunset on a mission. They're coming out for dinner, so they're going to come out and forage all night long. They'll be flying at least 60 miles away. The Mexican free-tailed bats have become a sight to see, a phenomenon unique to our area. The bats are coming out at the bottom of an 80-foot deep sinkhole, so spiraling out in a counterclockwise vortex we call it a batnado. They create the batnado to get thousands of colonies out of the cave. When they drop off the ceiling, the vortex, the spiraling vortex that you see, allows those gr smaller groups to get together. We're in the middle of the bat NATO right now. As you can see, there are millions of Mexican free-tailed bats flying behind me, emerging out of this cave right now. We're told that they're gonna forage 150 tons of bugs and insects, basically their food, just tonight. Most of those bugs are gonna be agricultural pests. So they're real important to our local farmers for all the agricultural pests that they eat. While the Mexican free tails are the main tenants during the summer, they aren't the only bat species in our area. Biologist Jeremiah McKinney is conducting an acoustic survey at Natural Bridge Caverns to identify how many species call San Antonio home. We've documented with the software indicating possibly 16 species at the ranch, which is a very wide array of species. Many of these species are tree bats, and in the past 15 years, these experts say that urbanization and the drought are their biggest threats. You're obviously losing diversity because they're having to search far and wide to get to water. We have um, 32 different species of bats that call Texas home. When we're losing the, the, that green space, we're losing that habitat for those bats. Farmland is where these free tails are headed tonight. The wind's guiding them as far away as Pleasanton before they return. You can't be, be in here because you can hear the bats, you can smell the bats, and you can see the bats. This emergence that we're seeing right now is going to last for at least three and a half hours. Reporting from Brackenback Cave, 
RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. You can also see him on radar yeah. almost every oh, evening, yeah. depending on how the radar is set. All right, Transcad right now, here's that, uh, that burn bus that we've been tracking out there, 35 South at Space Center. Stephen's going to have more coming up in 10 minutes. Went out and saw that one time mm -hmm. a few years back. Mm -hmm. it was, it, you can't even describe mm -hmm. what that's like when they start coming out and then all of a sudden, and again, it's just the air is filled with these bats flying in this big sure. circle and somebody had described it because they they have trouble jumping upward and so as they're beating their wings and since there's 20 million of them they create enough of an updraft and that works so they can get going upward yeah so yeah it's it, 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 to see it, yeah, it's watching him is so and of cool. course we have the big bat release here downtown yeah. mm -hmm. and, and austin's famous for one too yeah um so i that's when i've seen the one under congress bridge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we used to go there a lot because it was just you know very cool to watch so i want to see i haven't and, seen bracken yet i need yeah. to see bracken and like you said it lasts for what two and a half three hours it just keep coming and coming and coming <laughs> so all right uh yeah <laughs> this heat is just oh my goodness gracious Mike, double check your mic real quick. It sounds like it may have died. Did it? Did it? Yeah. Did it is it, where is it? There? It's down there. You've yeah. got it uh, on your yeah. sock, I've right? Got it, yeah. Okay. Was it not on? How's that? I think I think I, I can, got it. I can hear you through my microphone. Let me okay. let me just hang with you guys. Oh, we've got a battery. Okay, yeah. that's going to require let's, some finagling. Let's, let's try. Okay. Let's see. My microphone. All right. Is... So, Mike, you're looking at 24-hour dew point changes. Yeah, it's dead, dead. It's dead. Mm hmm. Right. So we're going to try it. No, There's it, a walk. No, it should be. Is it dead? It dead? just came back on. Can you hear Mike? It's no. dead. Okay, here we go. I need a couple of quick batteries here. Yep, right. Nope, I need. Oh, those okay. kind. Come here, James. That's okay. Tell you what, we are going. Start talking, Mark, while I'm doing this here. Okay, so <laughs> Mike was saying that the heat's been relentless. He's got the 24 hour dew point change right now. I've never seen this map before, Mike, that I recall, so I can't pretend to explain it. <laughs> so this is comparing to uh, this time yet. Well, darn it. Oh. Why don't we go to break and <laughs> come back and we'll weather, get yeah. our act together and do weather. We do that, Booth? We do that? Yeah. Thank you very much for bearing with us. It's called technical difficulties with a couple of dead batteries. All right, we were talking about the, the dew point change from yesterday morning, where there's that much more moisture in there. These dew points have gone up a good four, five, six, seven degrees. And yeah, you definitely feel it when you step outside. And that's going to be the situation throughout the, the rest of the morning. Now, dew points will drop down, but we're still staying just kind of in the low 60s. So enough humidity out there combined with that 98 degrees to where you're really going to feel it. And the heat index is going to be, you know, add a couple of degrees on top of that. So in many locations, it will feel like 100 today. We're going to be staying in the mid 70s all morning long, already up to 90 at noon, normal high 89. Yeah, do the math there. And then 98 for a high temperature, two degrees away from the record today. And let's jump ahead to Sunday. We do have a chance for a couple of showers around here again, depending on which computer model you look at. This one doesn't bring things in until later on Sunday and then going through the day Monday, a couple of showers around the area. Yeah, it's an OK shot at some rain on Monday would be the best opportunity. And believe it or not, there may be a couple of spots where you get some heavy downpours if anything does happen to pop up and a couple of leftovers on Tuesday. Jump ahead to a different long range computer model. This one brings things in maybe a little bit sooner on Sunday. Uh, uh, again, sort of paints with a, a broad brush. And then Monday, yes, we will have a couple of showers left over around here. Same thing going into Tuesday. Uh, rain chances, though, are not that great. Now, until then, stays very, very hot. 98 today, tomorrow, Saturday, 97. Each day within a degree or two of its respective daily record high temperature. And then Sunday, 20% chance for a couple of showers. A little bit better shot on Monday. And yes, Temperatures will, I, I kind of describe begrudgingly, sort of drop down into the mid and leaning toward the lower 90s by the middle portion of the week. We will take anything we can get, but that's still going to be a good three, four, almost five degrees above normal. We'll be back after this. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the Biden administration is announcing new policies to handle the surge of migrants crossing the southern border.
This is a poor, an immigration system that has failed. As a county, we are not resourced to handle this many people you know, coming in. Up next, why some migrants are being granted temporary legal status and how that's affecting the Migrant Resource Center here in San Antonio. The humidity is back with a vengeance this morning. We've actually gone up a degree in the last half hour or so. Stand by for Mike's forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, September 21st. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining yeah. us. And yeah, I felt that humidity right away. Didn't even have to look at my phone to see what was going on outside. That's right. We uh, Summer, we were hoping would be a fond memory, but we're still waiting for fall. Mike Oster Hage. Yeah, it officially begins on Saturday, you know, and, and it's almost adding insult to injury. You know, it's bad enough having these temperatures that are averaging anywhere from five to almost 10 degrees above normal. Then you got to throw in the humidity on top of that. So we have have somewhat of a heat index to deal with this morning. 78 degrees and then look at the bottom number 73 the two points sort of the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, just a few days ago that was down in the low 60s here in town. So each and every day we've had more and more morning humidity and yes it will be dropping down this afternoon but there'll still be enough around to really add a, you know, again, a little insult to, to that to 98 degrees, if you will. So it's going to feel like it's right around 100 with some of that leftover humidity this afternoon. The aquifer dropped down seven tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and mold is on the high side. Got uh, kind of a whole little shopping list of uh, some other fall allergens out there. Everything, though, is low. Heat index right now feels like 81 when you step outside here in town. 83 Castroville as well as Canyon. Lake. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty humid when you uh, when you walk out there. And again, we do have a high amount of mold in the atmosphere. So mostly sunny, hot, near record high temperature today within a couple of degrees. And that's going to be the case tomorrow as well as Saturday. 98 tomorrow, 97 we're going for on Saturday for the first day of fall. Near record each and every day. Then we go into Sunday and Monday. So we'll have some rain around the area couple just you know scattered showers here and there later in the day on Sunday a little bit more a little bit better chance of rain on Monday we're not talking great but at least a, a slightly better chance and actually there could be a couple of heavier downpours believe it or not it's either feast or famine around here we're still going to be in the mid 90s but then temperatures will sort of just just ease down a little bit more into the uh, low 90s as we get toward the middle part of next week not quite down to where we should be but anything going down as far as temperatures that's okay. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on this morning? Hey, keeping our eyes on the scene, Mike, where we have flashing lights. Let's get a quite wider look at Transguide and show you what's taking shape out there. Now, this is a bus fire, and this actually involves a privately owned school bus. Now, take a look at this shot from Transguide. We still have crews out there, but this scene actually took place just after 2 this morning. According to a sergeant on the scene, a man had actually recently bought that school bus at an auction. When he was towing it back to his place, he noticed it was on on fire and pulled over there uh, near 410 southbound at I-35 close to that interchange. Firefighters had arrived on the scene and were able to get the flames under control, but this led to a shutdown there along uh, 410 35 interchange for quite some time. And we still have crews out there, as you can see from that Transguide camera. I don't know. It doesn't appear that there were any serious injuries associated with this incident, but we're going to keep a close eye on this. I'm noticing already a buildup out there where we have 410 southbound at FM 78. And I talked to our friends at Transguide earlier this morning. They tell me that loop 410 southbound is still closed as crews remain on the scene. So hopefully we will be in the clearing stages here and uh, we'll see those flashing lights disappear. But as we give you a wide look at the map, not a whole lot else going on out there. That's good news. So if you were planning on hitting the roads and heading right here to the Alamo City, the journey from Bernie shouldn't be too bad. It's 23 minutes along I-10 eastbound, 25 minutes along 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bolverde, and 24 minutes along 35 southbound from New Braunfels. But we want to, we want you to be aware of what's going on here at 35 at Space Center. Again, we're going to take a closer look at this scene, find out exactly what caused that fire. We'll have that information for you a little bit later on this morning. But if you travel through that area, just remember that exit is closed. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. There's a lot of talking going on among elected county leaders to address the lack of communication between the Bear County District Attorney's Office and the San Antonio Police Department. Judge Ron Ronhell says he's been involved in informal meetings to figure out concerns about criminal cases not moving forward and repeat offenders being released from jail. The 379th criminal district judge says his investigation shows that the problem isn't with the bail system. I think the parties like to sort of use misnomers to sort of point the finger at each other and point the finger away from each other. But in reality, 
more than anything, it's a communication within various, various aspects within the county and the city that need to come together and communicate about how they're going to process these cases efficiently. Judge Ron Hill says there are 10,000 cases waiting to be indicted and judges are waiting for those cases. Ron Hill and County Judge Peter Sakai have both said a list of recommendations will be released in a couple of weeks. This morning, Eagle Pass, Texas, declaring an emergency in response to the migrant crisis on the southern border. At the same time, the Biden administration is clearing the way for some migrants to get work permits. Some of them have been bused to New York, where another protest was held last night. As ABC's Rhiannon Alley reports, a new policy extending legal status for some Venezuelans is just one new move announced last night by the Homeland Security Department. This morning, the Biden administration is announcing new policies to handle the surge of migrants crossing the southern border and overwhelming cities across the country. There's no end in sight. Yeah. We don't know, you know when it's going to end. The administration will now send 800 Defense Department personnel to the border, in addition to the 2,500 National Guard members already deployed to help Customs and Border Protection. The administration is also expanding deportation protocols to remove move more families under an already existing program. And in perhaps the biggest move, it's granting temporary legal status to 400,000 Venezuelans already in the U.S., making it easier for them to get authorization to work. New York's governor praising the decision. You have people here who are in shelters, supported by the city, and Mayor Adams is doing an extraordinary job, but they can't work. This is for people who came before July 31st, so it's not an enticement for more to come after. New York City is currently paying to house 60,000 newly arrived migrants, and more could be on the way as the southern border sees a new surge. Eagle Pass, Texas, now declaring an emergency, with 2,500 migrants arriving yesterday alone. And hundreds of migrants were seen riding on top of this Mexican train heading north. This isn't a political situation. This is not a left or right issue. This is a poor, an immigration system that has failed. As a county, we are not resourced to handle this many people, you know, coming in. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. And here at home, San Antonio is feeling the effects of what is happening on the border. Some of the people crossing in the past few days are already here hoping the city can take care of them. Some of those who arrived at the Migrant Resource Center on San Pedro have been traveling for months. One Venezuelan migrant says it took him nearly half a day just to get screened and inside the resource center because of the amount of people. I got here at 11 last night, he said. I asked, but when did you get inside? Not until 9 in the morning, so like 9, 10 hours. Catholic Charities runs the center and workers there are seeing about 750 people per day. However, that center can only hold up to 700. Now throughout the day, empty buses were arriving to pick people up. When we asked Catholic Charities where they were being taken, they said, quote, likely the airport. Happening tomorrow, KSAC Community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to help fight hunger during Hunger Action Month. On Friday, we'll be hosting a town hall starting at 2.30 p.m. so you can learn how to give back. We'll be live streaming the town hall on our website. Can I also find more information about Hunger Action Month at ksat.com. Then on Saturday, it's our annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for the brain cancer research. Now, the event is in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who passed away about 10 years ago. Now, if you'd like to register, you can go head over to Head for the Cure slash San Antonio, or we also have that link on our website at kset.com. And right now, you can still register and use the code KSET to get $5 off your registration fee. That 5K starts this Saturday at 8 in the morning, again at Providence High School, which is right across the street from KSET pretty much. Right now it is 509, 78 degrees. Airbnb says it's cracking down on fake listings just ahead. How many the company has removed so far this year? Researchers warning pregnant women to stay away from diet soda. Up next, why it's now being linked to autism in babies. And let's look out there with live cam. Okay, the you know, sun's not beating down, but it is a little humid out there. Be prepared for that. We're at 78 degrees, like Mark said. We'll be right back. You may want to be uh, careful the next time you drink a diet soda or sugar-free soda. 
A new study from UT Health San Antonio found that pregnant women who drink diet soda containing aspartame are at increased risk for having children born with autism. Now, the risk is specific to women having boys who have a quadruple chance of being born with autism from mothers who have one diet soda or drink per day. Baby girls have a lower risk, but one professor says any amount of aspartame is too dangerous for the human body to handle. So about 10% of the aspartame we, anyone puts in their bodies turns into methanol, which turns into formaldehyde and formic acid, which are very toxic. Hart and Fowler and other researchers say that grabbing a diet soda while pregnant is not a healthy way to keep your weight down. Wow. 513, 78 degrees. Amazon rolls out a new generative AI version of its popular digital assistant that makes the improvements made so far. Plus, a first look at Amazon's map view and how it can help you control all your compatible smart home devices. Lysol is supporting schools by providing materials to teach healthy habits so they can kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. Keeping kids together here at places like the lunch table where they can share who they truly are. Because when kids are together, they thrive. Lysol, here for healthy schools. Good morning with Bocalax. Good, good, good morning. Hey. Try Dolcolax Chewy Fruit Bites for fast and gentle constipation relief in as little as 30 minutes. Making your good morning even better with Dolcolax. Have fun, sis. <laughs> Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. In today's Tech Bites, Airbnb cracks down on fakes. Airbnb has removed 59,000 fake listings so far this year, and the company says it has also prevented nearly 160,000 more fake listings from joining the platform. A recent survey found fakes among the top concerns among Airbnb users. Amazon is rolling out a new AI model for Alexa. The latest generative AI features will allow Alexa to hold more natural conversations. The speaker will also have a more human-like voice that expresses emotions like excitement and even laughter. And finally, Amazon has also unveiled a new way to control the company's smart devices. Map View allows users to create digital floor plans of your home. Instead of controlling devices via Alexa, you just tap them on the map. It'll be available on iOS later this year. I love a good map. I'd be lost without one. Those are your tech bites. We never hear groans in the studio, so everybody yeah. must be going along with Andrew on that. Yeah, that they're was, probably like, yes, yeah. good job. <laughs> okay, I read a meme the other day, which yes. was fantastic, and these are a couple of uh, groaners, that the invention of the shovel was groundbreaking. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's a groaner. Uh, yes. yes, but uh, the invention of the broom just swept across the country. So. <laughs> yes. yes. That one I like. I like that one. Uh, you know, people were probably groaning with that closure there yeah. at uh, 410 southbound. Now, let's get a look at the video from the scene earlier. This was actually a pretty scary situation. Uh, so you can take a look at the video from earlier. This was reported sometime after 2 this morning. And information that we got into our newsroom is that this was actually a privately owned bus. Uh, according to a sergeant on the scene, a man had recently purchased that school bus at an auction. He was towing it back when he noticed that it was on fire fire pulled over to the side and crews were able to arrive and extinguish those flames. But just check out that video. Wow. Thankfully, again, this was a privately owned school bus. Uh, no injuries that we know of were reported, but you can still see that crews were out there for a little while uh, working to clear this up. We saw that at least up until 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I should say. But now as we take a look here at TransGuide, Things are looking a lot better. It's already cleared out. This was a shot our friends over there have, were able to provide us, and you can see traffic's moving through there without any trouble. But we did see a little bit of a buildup earlier where that bus fire was reported at 410 southbound at FM 78, which actually led to that closure of the exit at Loop 410. So that is cleared out. Better news to report, but we'll find out exactly what sparked that fire. Wider look at the map shows that it is still quiet, but a crash has popped up off of the main lane somewhere outside of Leon Valley. We'll take a closer look at that a little bit later on. But Mike, better news report here at 35 at Space Center. Good news. Hopefully it stays nice all morning long. All right. 
You know, we were talking about the number of triple digit days, uh, which was up to 74. Well, we have to can't forget about the number of record high temperatures that we set throughout the the three month period from June through July and August. As a matter of fact, so you go into August and look at how many days were actual record high temperatures for those specific days. Obviously up in the 105 106 range for most of them. When you add them all up, 26 daily record high temperatures were either tied or set throughout the three month period. That again is on top of the 74 triple digit days that we had around here. And we're going to be close to a couple of records now. We were close yesterday, today as well as tomorrow. Great picture from uh, Oscar of here with a Really special camera lens there, looking at some of the dark spots on the sun. Very neat. Thank you very much. Too bad they're not shading that sun a little bit more to cut this heat. We got some clouds hanging around here right now. Temperatures, we're in the mid 70s, mid and upper 70s. Uh, we're going to stay steady all morning long, thanks to all the humidity, thanks to some of that cloud cover. All the way up through the 80s into 90 at noon. Already above the normal high temperature, we top off at 98. The record is 100. There's going to be just enough leftover humidity out there as well to make it feel even hotter than that. So here's what's going on. The high still is is really kind of controlling things, dominating things, almost sitting right on top of us. That's why we have such hot temperatures. Again, this thing just will not get out of here. The low up there to the north of us continues to pretty much stay up there. Yes, this front is going to start to sort of ease down in our direction. And as it gets a little closer by Sunday, Monday, that's what's going to touch off one or two showers out there. A little bit better chance on Monday. And it's not like it's going to be coming through with gangbusters, but uh, it will slowly ease temperatures downward, but we're not getting again that flow coming right out of the north in behind this. That's what you really need. This good north to northwesterly flow upstairs in the atmosphere to really get that colder air coming on in here. Yeah, it is cold up there to the north, but it's going to be staying up there for a while and we're going to be staying on the very hot side for the next couple of days. Like I said, close to record high temperatures, not only today, tomorrow, Saturday, Upper 90s, a couple of extra clouds around here on Sunday, 96, uh, one or two showers as well, especially later on in the day. And then the better chance of rain is going to be on Monday. Not great, but slightly better. And, you know, it's funny, we, we can't buy rain. And then all of a sudden on Monday, there is going to be the chance for a couple of heavier downpours here and there. You know, it's feast or famine. And then we'll at least be in the mid and lower 90s by the middle of next week. Well, that's good. We, we need that rain. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, just for some folks, not all at once, yeah. so. Yeah. And a nearly 100% chance of continued dad jokes from Mike. 522, 78 degrees. Yep. <laughs> Up next, a new look at the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes trailer, plus a new documentary that focuses on a ballet program for children affected by homelessness. 525, get ready for a new Hunger Games prequel, plus another daytime talk show is stopped, but not because of the writer's strike. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. Mr. Snow, after everything you've seen out there in the world, what are the Hunger Games for? They're to punish the districts. The latest trailer for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, gives us more of a look at the dystopian nation of Pan Am, long before the original books and movies. Tom Blythe, Rachel Zegler, Peter Dinklage, and Viola Davis star in the prequel, which arrives in theaters November 17th. Because I want to be here. Sherry Shepard has paused her daytime talk show, but not because of the writer's strike. A post on the show's Instagram account states Shepard has tested positive for COVID-19 and will return as soon as she's cleared by a doctor. Shepard's show is not a WGA show, which allowed Shepard to continue hosting during the strike. I've traveled around the world performing and choreographing. I was the obvious choice to mentor these kids because I was someone who had gone through what they're going through. The documentary Lift looks at a remarkable ballet program for children affected by homelessness and their mentor, Stephen Melendez, trying to lift children out of the same shelter where he was a child. Filmed over more than a decade, Lyft is in select theaters now and is available on digital platforms Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, 78 degrees. Up next, why lawmakers in Washington are finally dealing with a months-long stalemate that held up hundreds of military promotions. Plus, cheese that can make you gag. We'll tell you what, what you need to know about Kraft, a Kraft cheese slice recall. Plus, this little pet needs a new home. We're going to check in with the Animal Defense League with how you can start the adoption process. 
And ahead on GMSA at 6, important news if you're trying to get pregnant. Some fertility do's and don'ts you need to know. Making headlines this morning, the Senate confirms the nomination of the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Well, we finally came to a little bit of conclusion, but it's about time. Uh, we should have done these a long time ago. Up next, why there was a months long stalemate that held up hundreds of military promotions. And looking out there with live cam, well, I'll take that 78 degrees, even though we have some humidity this morning. Hoping for change, and actually, we might get some next week. That's right. Good morning, everybody. Thursday, September 21st. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. Well, at least the afternoons, I mean, I know that it's been hot, but it had seemed like there'd been less humidity. There had been, uh, but now it's, there's going to be enough hanging around to where you're going to sort of feel it later on in the afternoon. The humidity has actually gone up quite a bit in the mornings as well. Go back if what, two, three days ago, it was downright pleasant when you stepped outside, but now it's fairly humid out there and you can see we got a couple of clouds that have already started to move on in 78 degrees. The normal average low is 68. Two point stands at 73, which means, yeah, there's a, enough humidity to where you definitely feel it when you step outside enough to give us that heat index right now of 81. Uh, 83 is what it feels like at Castroville as well as Canyon Lake. And we do have a lot of mold out there. Fall elm, ragweed, pigweed all on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 90 at noon. The average high, normal high is 89. And then we're almost 10 above that again. 98, just like yesterday, the record is 100. It's going to be a really close call. And there will be enough leftover humidity to make that 98 feel just a bit hotter than that. Just to really, even in the shade, it's not going to be that comfortable when you step outside. What about some, any changes at all? There's a little bit of a change coming in here once we get into the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. We'll talk about that and those rain chances as well. Traffic Authority. So got some, you had a couple of problems earlier, We did. Right? Uh, we did, Mike. And, you know, I'm just checking some of my reports right now. It does look like a new crash may have popped up near 1604 westbound at US 281. I'll get on the phone with TransGuide about that and see if we can get a view from the conditions out there, but from what I'm seeing, at least two lanes are blocked, and that does include the shoulder lane. So we'll work to get that image for you. But right now, look around town. 410 at McCullough. Things are moving in the east and westbound lanes. No delays for traffic there, but things are picking up as we get closer to 6 a.m. We don't have any serious incidents reported on the map just yet, but again, we'll get the work. work pardon me. We'll get work to get that crash scene uh, labeled for you here on our map at 604 westbound at 281. So uh, again, not spotting major delays. If you're traveling into town, it still be it should be pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 28 minutes at this hour, about 33 minutes from 80, uh, 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia and a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But again, we're going to work to get that image for you at 1604 at 281. I don't see it on any of our TransGuide cameras just yet, so I'll step out of the studio, talk to our friends at TransGuide and get an update for you coming up in the next few minutes. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. A recent surge of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border is having an impact here in San Antonio. Now, people have been flooding into the Migrant Resource Center, and right now it appears there is an overflow. Our Katrina Weber is there live on San Pedro Avenue, not far from Oblate Drive. And Katrina, what are you seeing? the story. You take a look behind me, you can see people all in that parking lot. Uh, lots of people lined up outside the migrant center here. Um, They're inside this area. It seems that they have chairs set up outside for them, rows and rows of chairs. Then all around this area, we also see people outside in this parking lot where we're standing, as well as on the edges of the lot where the Migrant Resource Center is located. Now, we're not allowed on the property there, so uh, we are giving you a look from a distance. Now, this center is run by the Catholic Charities, and they tell us that they are definitely seeing uh, an increase in people here. They say that they usually hold about 700 people in the center per day. But lately, as in the past month, they've been starting to see about 750 people per day coming here. This is a humanitarian uh, center, as they say. They offer services for people who are passing through the area, migrants passing through the area, services such as food, uh, Internet access, 
transportation locally. And in fact, we did see what looked like one of those airport shuttle buses come through just a little while ago with people on board. Not exactly sure where they're going, but uh, there is a surge of migrants at the border. There's no exact cause that's being given for that, but definitely seems to be having an impact here. Now, I mentioned there are people outside the center, and we're going to see if we can talk to some of those folks uh, in between and then bring you their stories, or at least to explain what may be happening here in San Antonio. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you. The threat of a potential government shutdown is still looming over Washington, D.C. As the clock is ticking, lawmakers are trying to work towards some sort of deal. But another matter that had been also in limbo for part of this year is starting to resolve. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the Senate is set to vote on the new Army Chief of Staff and the new Marine Corps Command later today. And the nomination is confirmed. Better late than never. Under the previous order, the motion to reconsider is made and laid upon the table and the president will be immediately notified of the Senate's actions. The Senate confirms the nomination of General C.Q. Brown as the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Wednesday night's vote came after a months-long stalemate that held up hundreds of military promotions led by Alabama Senator and former college football coach Tommy Tuberville. Well, we finally came to a little bit of conclusion, but it's about time. Uh, we should have done these a long time ago. Tuberville has been holding up votes over his opposition to a Defense Department policy reimbursing travel costs for service members who would go across state lines to seek an abortion. In order to get the ball rolling, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer moved to have three positions, including General Brown's, voted on separately from the block opposed by Tuberville. If everyone objected to everything to get leverage for their pet priorities, it will grind this body to a halt. Brown's confirmation passed by a vote of 83 to 11. The no votes came from Tuberville and 10 other Republican senators, including Josh Hawley of Missouri, Marco Rubio of Florida, and Ted Cruz of Texas. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Goldman Sachs predicts oil prices will average $100 a barrel a year from now. That's after citing Saudi Arabia's aggressive supply cuts. Brent crude, the world benchmark, currently sells for about $94 a barrel. Goldman said it doesn't see prices going consistently above $105 a barrel next year. However, $100 a barrel oil would be very bad news for drivers. Gas prices have climbed to 2023 highs in recent days. According to AAA, drivers in 11 states are now paying an average of $4 a gallon or higher. The 2024 election is less than 14 months away, but voting machine companies are already making sure that their systems will be safe. Three big voting equipment vendors say they have granted a group of cybersecurity researchers access to their software and hardware. The goal was to see if they could find ways to break into the systems. Some of the attack scenarios included stuffing ballot boxes and knocking electronic poll books offline. The results are still being processed. However, the vendors say they are already making tweaks to their security protocols in response to the test. Following the 2020 election, former President Donald Trump and his allies claimed that machines made by Dominion voting systems were used to rig the election. It stinks to lose something expensive, but a Michigan woman learned that the hard way, that some things are just not worth retrieving. Police say they had to rescue the unidentified woman Tuesday from an outhouse near a boat launch in Gaylord, Michigan, after she lowered herself into the toilet to receive, retrieve rather, her Apple Watch, which had fallen and had gotten stuck inside. The woman was heard calling for help when first responders arrived. They had to remove the toilet and lower a strap to hoist the woman out safely. Let it go. Oh. Let it go. Glad she's okay. It's time now, 538 and 78 degrees for now. JD Power out with its best airports reports when it comes to customer satisfaction. Up next, find where San Antonio International ranks at which airport is the worst. Plus cheese that can make you gag. Up next, a recall warning from Kraft regarding some of its popular cheese slices. And outside with live cam hovering right around 78 degrees, a lot of humidity. You see that in the form of some clouds out there as well. Any chance of rain in the extended forecast? Mike says, yeah, maybe. We'll talk about it coming up. 
and welcome back. It's 542 in your morning consumer headlines. Several prominent writers have joined the Authors Guild in class action lawsuit against OpenAI for alleged copyright infringement. John Grisham and Jonathan Frazen are among the 17 authors who joined the lawsuit. It claims that OpenAI AI illegally downloaded their copyrighted books. The lawsuit claims OpenAI could possibly see a profit by creating new works in the author's styles, but the writers could get nothing. San Antonio International Airport still one of the nation's best, according to J.D. Power and Associates. It ranked ninth out of 28 in the large airports category when it comes to customer satisfaction. Airports are evaluated by looking at several factors, including terminal facilities, airport arrival departure, baggage claim, security check, and food and beverage, also retail. Detroit's Metropolitan Wayne County Airport had the highest score, rounding out the top five, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Harry Reid International in Las Vegas, DFW and Miami International, the lowest scoring airport in the U.S. according to this survey, was in New York at Newark Liberty International in Jersey. Kraft is recalling roughly 83,000 cases of individually wrapped Kraft Singles American cheese that might be, quote, unpleasant or may make you gag. Uh. <laughs> Kraft Heinz said the faulty American cheese singles could pose a choking hazard. The company's statement characterized the problem as a temporary issue with one of its wrapping machines. Now, according to that statement, a thin strip of the individual film may remain on the slice after the wrapper has been removed. Kraft issued the recall after several customers complained of finding the plastic on its cheese. There haven't been any reported injuries or health issues, and the faulty machine has been fixed. I have a solution. Uh -huh. Don't eat the plastic. <laughs> well, maybe that they don't see it. Right, they yeah. probably don't see it. It's, it is kind of hard to see. So, and, but, and unpleasant, I'm sure. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't taste good, trust me. 544, 78 <laughs> degrees. And are you looking for a new friend? Well, we have the perfect one coming up next, thanks to the Animal Defense League. Checking Transky, traffic is flowing at 410 and Ray Ellison, 410 at Starcrest. Stephen Cavazos is standing by literally with an update coming up. Well, Felicia's here from the Animal Defense League, and oh, nothing like a little kitty yeah. cat. They are so <laughs> fun to play with. Oh my gosh, so much fun. So this is Cricket, and she is a three-month-old little baby available for adoption. Of course, we are open every single day from 11 to 7, so come on out, see Cricket. If she's already been adopted, there are so many other pets in need of a home, so please look at all of the amazing pets we have. You know, not to get greedy here as far as adopting them out, but two cats are basically the same as one. Seriously. Yes. I mean, they use the same litter box. They, they keep each other company. Exactly. Yeah, it's not like having having two dogs. So. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I definitely agree. If you're able to, um, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and adopt two kittens so that they have someone to play with, someone to grow old with and have fun with. And it just, it really helps to just, you know, have someone at home that they can spend that time with, especially if you're at work throughout the day yeah. or at school throughout the day. It's helpful to have great a couple little babies with like an old married couple. <laughs> anyway, what you got going on? <laughs> well, of course, you know, the big give is happening mm -hmm. and um, this is a great opportunity to support pets at the Animal Defense League of Texas by donating to the big give. You can go to biggiveadl.com and give that way. And it's just a great opportunity, like I said, to to show that love and that support so that so many other pets that come into the shelter can find their forever home, get adopted, you you know, maybe they need to go into the foster program or they came in with a, a medical emergency. So all of those funds will help to um, make sure that all these babies are taken care of and vaccinated, microchipped, mm -hmm. get their spay and neuter surgery, all that good stuff. Wonderful. <laughs> and of course, they're always looking for volunteers yes. and fosters, everything else. And if you want to find out more about Big Give and this little baby as well and the other <laughs> kitties and puppies out there, 11300 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, PetSmart, ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Yeah, that is true. Two cats are pretty much the same as one. My parents have two cats back at home. Um, they grew up together, played together, but I don't think they like each other anymore. So uh -huh. that does happen. But you know what? They are old and they do love their home. So just make sure to adopt. Don't shop. Quick look around town. 410 at Starcrest. Things continue to move there without any trouble. But as I mentioned earlier, we were keeping an eye on a crash that was reported at 1604 Westbound at US 281. I did talk to our friends at Transguide, and it does appear that that particular shot uh, was not, or we're not able to get that on our cameras there, but I'm not seeing any reports of it anymore, so it may have cleared out pretty quickly. So that's good news, but I'm still going to keep a close eye on that spot throughout the morning. Drive down over here does show we're starting to see stall vehicles. US 90 Westbound at Nogal 
Alitos. Be on the lookout there if you're traveling through the area. And we do have another one right over here along I-10 westbound at Roland Avenue. So our morning commute isn't too bad, but we are picking up some issues out there on TransGuide in our maps. But we'll watch things closely. If anything pops up, I'll be sure to let you know. But back on TransGuide, things seem to be moving just fine. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This picture, which is absolutely gorgeous here, and then the, the oh, caption yeah. kind of sums it up because Mr. Oh, wow. McClellan says, let's go back to Sunday. We got down to 69 degrees Sunday, so 10 degrees lower than where we are right now in the morning. That's and we true. had that, that lower humidity. It was and, nice. Oh, gosh, it was fantastic it's out just there. majestic, Mike. Now, the picture yeah. is, is just spectacular as yeah. well. Um, but, yeah, and that was down to just about a normal temperature last Sunday morning. Not this morning, nor in the afternoon, but thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAC Connect shot. All right, got a lot of clouds right now, and, the, you know, earlier in the week, we didn't really have any. Now they've kind of come in a little bit more, along with some of the humidity that has been building back in overnight. And then the problem is it, it will drop down in the afternoon, but it's not going to just completely get on out of here like we had even late last week as far as in the afternoon. First of all, temperatures throughout the course of the morning over the next 12 hours, we're going to make it up to 90 at noon. Again, got to say it's 89 is the normal high, so we're still above that. We're already above that at noon and then almost 10 degrees above normal by later on today. 98 just like we had yesterday, uh, two degrees away from the record today and with the little bit of leftover humidity, that 98 is going to feel like 100, 101, 102 around the area. So we will have a slight bit of a heat index to deal with. Not oppressively humid, but, you know, enough to where it's like uh, not even the shade. Is it completely comfortable? So here's the uh, computer model going into Sunday between now and then. Nothing but just very hot temperatures. But by Sunday, as that front sort of lies in the area, and I'm going to show you two long range computer models here because they differ ever so slightly. This one by Sunday night does have a couple of showers trying to pop up around here, as well as on Monday. Monday being the slightly better chance for a couple of these showers. And it's not like it's going to be, you know, a complete huge rain event. Obviously, there will, however, be the opportunity for a couple of heavier downpours because we got a lot of moisture that's going to be coming on in here on Monday, Tuesday, perhaps a couple of uh, showers hanging around. That'll be about it. Different computer model, and this one brings things in a little bit earlier on Sunday. And then on throughout the day on Monday, this is the better chance for some rain. So that's what things are agreeing on. So we're going to say in OK, a decent chance for some rain around here by Monday. Again, not everybody's going to see it, unfortunately. And then, of course, with the extra cloud cover, that's going to help to hold temperatures down somewhat. And then we'll get a little bit lower by the middle part of next week. But until then, 98 today, 98 tomorrow. Close to the record high temperature. Same thing on Saturday, close to the record. And 96 on Sunday, then mid to lower 90s by the middle part of next week. Still above normal, but I mean, I'll take 92 over 98. We're not complaining, but did you make a call? Did you write a letter to Mother Nature? Did you ask about our, our, our concerns that this was lasting way too long? Um, got that reply, the out of office email. Oh, out of yeah. office. So Mother Nature's out of office. Yeah. Okay. Not back until sometime in uh, November, I think. Okay, okay so. we'll check back. All right, we'll revisit that. Thank you, Mike. 553, 78 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, four, eight, fireball eight. Daily four, two, seven, nine, nine, fireball seven. Not that we're expecting amazing customer service from Mother Nature. <laughs> Cash five, two, five, six, 24, 28. Lotto Texas, 10, 18, 28, 30, 43, 45. And Powerball, 16, 27, 59, 62, 63. Powerball 23, Power Play three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the crisis at the border. The Biden administration announcing new steps overnight to help overwhelmed cities in the region as one declares a state of emergency. Also, the urgent manhunt for a murder suspect who was mistakenly released from jail. It all happened in Indiana. We'll get into those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA Import News, if you're trying to get pregnant, some fertility do's and don'ts that you need to know. And later, a huge increase in the number of migrants at the southern border is being felt in San Antonio. How Eagle Pass and the Alamo City are dealing with so many people crossing over this week. 
And up next, as things slowly, and we mean slowly, cool down, some former bachelorette celebrities are spreading the word on fun adventures you can do with your pets this fall. And checking Trans Guide, 281 at St. Mary's looks great as we wait for the sun to come up on your Thursday morning. You're watching GMSA. Everything that we thought was our future um, kind of just changed and disappeared um, in an instance. This morning on GMSA, North Carolina family says using Google Maps cost a man his life. How the tragedy is now playing out in court. Plus, Capitol Hill lawmakers now have just nine days to avert a government shutdown. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on the Republican brokered short-term funding deal that's now facing fire from both sides of the aisle. That story ahead. And summer is ending on a bank here as we get towards the end of the week. A very strong humidity out there this morning. Quite a few clouds and hovering around 78 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. But we soldier on with the work week. Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It's 6 o'clock on your Thursday, September 21st. Hey, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope you had a good week. And yeah, you know, humidity kind of greeted, greeted me this morning when I stepped outside you as well. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you can't miss it for sure as you head out the door. Mike Ostrage joined us now with a look at your Thursday forecast. It's going to be hot again today. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we did hit 98 in the afternoon, two away from That's the... pretty close to the record. Record, isn't it? The record's 100. Same thing yeah. today. Going to be close to it again tomorrow as well as on Saturday, staying in the upper 90s. Uh, we do have a chance for some rain, albeit small, but at least we'll take anything right now. Yeah, it's just going to be sizzling hot today and the humidity has come back. You know, a couple of days ago we had fairly pleasant humidity in the morning. It was pretty low and now it has come back in here. So with all these temperatures in the uh, low mid 70s and some upper 70s out there, obviously, and these numbers were about 10 degrees lower a couple of days ago. The dew points, the measure of moisture, we were down in the 50s out in parts of the hill country, we're down in the low 60s here. So now it's 73, 74, look at that, 76 over there at Randolph. That is definitely wet towel, uh, tropical rainforest, however you want to describe it, pushback kind of humidity when you walk outside. It feels like 81 out there at the airport, 83 with the humidity at Castroville. And it will, the humidity will drop down later on this afternoon, but there's still going to be enough out there to where you notice it. Mold is on the high side. Everything else, fall elm, ragweed, pigweed are low. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour and a half or so. Temperature is going to stay steady for the next hour, hour and a half. Then we warm up through the 80s, already up to 90, already above the normal high at noon. And then, like I was saying, topping off at 98. Very close call to the record high. And with just enough humidity left over, it's going to feel a bit hotter than that. What about those rain chances and a little bit lower temperatures? Can we take anything we can get? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Hey, Mike, we're all ready to drive off into the weekend, and we're almost there, but let's get a quick look at your Thursday commute as we get the morning rolling. 410 at Ray Ellison, you can see that not a lot has changed in the last few minutes, but you're probably going to start to see a little bit more traffic on some of these trans guide cameras as people do wake up and get their day started. It does look like we may have a stall there at 281 at St. Mary's. Tough to say from this particular shop, but we'll get a closer look and find out if there's anything there that could impact your drive time. If you're heading along US 90, be on the lookout in the westbound lanes. We have a stall reported not too far from Nogolitos. It's not really caused any issues, but those eastbound lanes of US 90 will be crowded with traffic here in the next hour, so just be on the lookout. As we take a drive, that same trend continues over here. Still, stall, the stall remains along I-10 West at Roland Avenue. Again, not causing any issues, but it, as we give you a wider look at the map, a few more stalls have popped up, so that does seem to be the trending trouble, at least for right now. Check those vehicles before you get your morning commute rolling, and just make sure to move over or slow down if you see those flashing lights. Quick look at travel times. It's a pleasant drive from Pleasanton along 37 northbound with 27 minutes to the Alamo City. 28 minutes along US 90. Not bad yet from the eastbound lanes along Castroville. Heading in from Castroville, pardon me. And right now, the arrival from Lytle should be about 15 minutes along 35 northbound. Back here on Trans Guide, no problems detected, but we'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have more updates for you throughout the morning. Mark. Thank you very much, Stephen. 604 happening now. You can take part in the big give. Our Sarah Costa joins us now with how you can help. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, this is a 24 hour online fundraiser and it benefits a lot of local nonprofits. So let's take a look. Here's a look now at the totals. You can see it. We have 11 hours and 55 minutes left. Last time I checked, we had about $2.4 million raised 
total. But let's take a look at the leaderboard. There you can see the Brighton Center is in first place. They are a local nonprofit that provides therapy services and education programs for children with disabilities and with developmental delays. Of course, Tracy Paws Rescue in second was $69,000 and Great Heart. So I was looking through this list, guys, and a lot of them are local schools, a lot of local private schools, a lot of local Catholic schools. Again, 11 hours left for the big give. Now this, you can visit biggivesa.org, this website to donate to any of those nonprofits. And since 2014, the Big Give has helped more than 1,200 local nonprofits connect with thousands of donors and collectively raised over $40 million. So right now on our website, you can see stories we have done about organizations that are benefiting, again, a lot of local nonprofits participating, 11 hours left. Mark, staff. Thank you, Sarah. The city of San Antonio is thinking about banning oversized vehicles from parking on some city streets overnight. It's not illegal, but some people get frustrated when some trucks are parked in non-residential areas. They worry they can get in the way of potential emergencies. Some businesses have to give up their parking lots to make room for the truckers throughout the night. So the city is thinking of creating a ban between 2 in the morning and 6 a.m. to help clear the streets. Top of your morning headlines. We're taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol in Washington this morning where the sun is now up. Lawmakers there have just nine days to avert a federal government shutdown. Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he has a short-term funding solution. But as ABC's Justin Finch reports, it's unclear if it has enough support to advance in the House and the Democrat-led Senate. After an hours-long meeting with House Republican conference members, Speaker Kevin McCarthy leaving optimistic about a short-term government funding deal they worked out. So we had a great discussion. Um, I think we've got a plan to move forward. Sources tell ABC News the proposal includes deeper spending cuts and stricter border policies, but faces an uphill battle in the Senate. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accusing Republicans of not keeping their word on spending levels agreed to with Democrats, taking swipes at the stopgap proposal. So it's very hard when you don't have shared values. Some hardline Republicans are voicing opposition too, saying McCarthy is breaking deals he made with them to become Speaker. All we've gotten are lies and broken promises and failure and shutdowns. Without a funding plan, estimates project that 4 million workers won't be paid, including the military and federal law enforcement. Speaker McCarthy says he intends to hold House members in Washington until at least Saturday as that September 30th funding deadline looms. President Zelensky is leading a country that is right at the forefront in the fight for democracy, in the fight for what is right, and we need to support him. New funding for Ukraine's fight against Russia, also a sticking point in the Capitol Hill spending debate, with many Republicans now opposed. Ukraine's President Zelensky set to meet with House and Senate members today. I want to make sure there's accountability where the resources are going. I want to see a plan of what we're looking for for victory. President Zelensky also meeting with President Biden at the White House today. A U.S. official tells ABC News that Biden is expected to announce a new military aid package that includes resources to bolster Ukraine's air defenses. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. North Carolina family says, depending on Google Maps, has cost a man his life. The family of a uh, father of two killed after driving off this bridge is now suing Google. They claim the company's app led to his death. Philip Paxson was driving home late at night from his daughter's birthday party when he was following a Google map route that led him down a road where a bridge was washed out nine years earlier. Paxson's car flipped, caused him, him to be trapped. He later drowned. Bill had no idea that for nine years, there was a 20 foot canyon in the middle of the road, in the middle of a residential neighborhood. The family is seeking compensation and punitive damages, but the amount has not been requested yet. The owners of the bridge and private road are also named in that lawsuit. As the Hollywood writer's strike stretches past four months, writers and Hollywood studios met yesterday to tackle a new round of discussions. Following the sit-down, the heads of the studios and the Writers Guild issued a rare joint statement to say another meeting is scheduled for today. Writers are asking for a raise in wages among a long list of other demands.
The 2024 election less than 14 months away and voting machine companies are already making sure their systems will work. Yesterday, three big voting equipment vendors announced a practice called coordinated vulnerability disclosure, which includes cyber attack scenarios, stuffing ballot boxes and knocking electronic poll books offline. The goal was to see if they could break into these systems in any way. The vendors say they're already making tweaks to the security protocols in response to those tests. Time now, 610 and 78 degrees for now. So to come on GMSA, Airbnb says it's cracking down on fake listings that cause major problems for customers. We'll explain what's going on before 630. And after the break, as things slowly cool down, some former Bachelorette celebrities are spreading the word on some fun adventures that you can do with your pets this fall. Back outside with live cam, it's a muggy morning out there, but we are one day closer to the weekend and one day closer to the official beginning of autumn. You're watching GMSA.